Um, well, first of all, congratulations on the show. And it's so wonderful to have the opportunity to talk to you because the last time I think you were in Toronto, you were pushing Matilda, which I sat in that press audience and you were up there on oh. the uh, on the stage and everything. And it was so great. Yeah, yeah, no, not rambling on. It was right. so much fun because I loved Matilda. I love the oh, music Christ. and I just think it was such a great oh, show. Uh, and we had a fantastic cast here. I don't know what, you know, because somebody who's a creator. Yeah, I know. You know, and you see so many different road shows of it and everything. What did yeah. you think of our cast here in Toronto? Well, I, I never got back up. I only met them in rehearsal and stuff, but I, I met a couple of them and kind of looked into their work and realized that I'd come across him before. Um, and Shamroy is our gift. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And yeah. Uh, yeah, and I was blown away, but it's not surprising because those guys, um, Mervish, the production company there, the Mervish guys, um, uh, they're, I mean, they take it, they're deadly serious. They're not, yeah. they're not mucking around. Yeah. No, they are not. We have a very serious yeah. theater scene here. So yeah. Yeah. hopefully it's you'll bring us another one down the road. I know, but we got lots yeah, of time. Yeah, we're working on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good, good. So Upright, I, you know, I was just saying, I dug right into this series, couldn't stop watching it. Before I knew it, it was oh, over. Good. I got hooked yeah. in, and like literally. And for you, I mean, you have just, done so much you know well whether it's your stand-up or it's your music or musicals or whatever you do and then this kind of just came at the right time in your life tell us about that yeah so I I am um, I'm Australian obviously and I left my hometown of Perth in Western Australia 15 years uh, no 18 years ago and moved across the country to Melbourne and then mm -hmm. I moved to London and Sarah and I had kids and then we moved to the States and um, a couple of years ago, we decided it was time to move home, but we, we couldn't move all the way to Perth because there's not really much of an industry there. So we moved right. to Sydney. And in, in that period, when we were moving from LA to Sydney, this idea came across my desk that a friend of mine, Chris Taylor, had come up with about a guy traveling with a piano across Australia. Um, he had come up with this idea and he had developed it a little bit um, with some other friends of mine. He thought maybe there's a, there's a, mum who's died in Perth and he needs to get back to see her. Right. And so it was a very basic premise. And I rolled into the writer's room feeling a bit battered by my Hollywood adventures, um, having had a couple of real knockbacks, but also having just turned 40 and having decided to move home and that kind of like, that has two sides to it. It's nice mm. to move back to Australia, but did it mean that I was sort of giving up on my career a bit and all those emotions. And this story, this kind of epic tale of a guy trying to carry something so heavy across such a big desert. I mean, Australia's the size of North America, right? Yeah. And, uh, and then this character that they had developed of this teenage runaway girl, this character called Meg, um, and this idea of writing all my feelings about homecoming, about family, about exile, I guess, and, and really about how, and this makes it all sound very serious. It's actually really fun and a, a rollicking adventure, but really oh, at, its core, yeah. at its core, it's about how our damage, our scratches and our scars and the mistakes we've made and how they, I know it's a, it's a well done theme, but I think our show does a good job of just making the point that we are who we are because of our scratches yeah. and scars, not despite them. You know, and that actually our beauty is in our flaws and all that stuff. No, no, absolutely. And I'm, I'm wondering, um, Tim, you know, having written, you know, such great material, especially something like Matilda, where you make us laugh and you make us cry, how much did that help you when you were, you know, developing this into the series? Well, there's a couple of things that as I've got older so I'm in my mid-40s now and I've been incredibly lucky I mean I, no one took any notice of me at all till I was 30 but but in the last 15 years I've been incredibly lucky to work in lots of different areas and but the thing that I just have realized in hindsight that that is in everything I do that I'm sort of obsessed with mm -hmm. uh twofold really the the grand theme of how do you how do you have meaning in a meaningless universe? Which so so my my humanist my you know non-religious my atheism and all that. Even though I don't talk about God 
in Matilda or in Upright, that sort of question of how do you be good people in the absence of anything greater? How, how, do, you, how do you live this one life with meaning and all that? Yeah. And on the, on the other side of the coin, something I'm obsessed with is the fact that I don't believe comedy and drama are separate categories at all. And I don't, I don't think anyone does. It's like, a, it's like a trick we played on ourselves when we started making television or, or doing entertainment. Yeah. Just to sort of give, like, like when you go into an ice cream shop, you, you want to be able to say, I want mint choc chip or I want almond fudge. So we sort of said, you can buy a ticket to a comedy show, or you can watch this drama. And it's, but we believe this, this, these categories and they're not true. Life is both all yeah. the time. And, yeah. and it can be in the same instant. You can be at a funeral sobbing and then laughing in an instant. Absolutely. And I really want to, so you're, you're very, it was a salient observation. I, that, the knife point of comedy and drama, and as long as your writing is truthful and your performance is truthful, your audience will always come with you. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. You know, I don't think in Upright it's flawless by any stretch. I think, you know, there's moments where I go, oh, that's a bit of a gear change, you know, but, <laughs> but the fa I think in Upright the audience believes in the truth of the characters, in what they're saying and what their desires are and who they are. And so if one minute there's a stupid joke and the next minute you feel like crying, yeah. then we've done our job. And I only want to make stuff that explores all that. Yeah, well, keep it up. Because this, like I say, I, I thought the tone in this was perfectly balanced. It really, really oh. was very, very well done. And um, I, another very positive part about this show is your road trip partner. Let's just talk about Millie Alcock. Where on earth did you find her? She, I the two know. of you, I mean, the chemistry between you, was it instant? No, I mean, it was instant in that, from, I mean, when we auditioned her, the first time we did a, a chemistry test, as they say, where they put both, you know, lead characters on camera to see what the vibe's like, she was really nervous and she's not amazing off the page. Yeah. You know, some actors can just, I'm actually not great off the page either. She, she was, but we just, she has an amazing star quality, mm. an amazing sort of seriousness. When you get a script like this, some actors might really go for the gags and be self-conscious about looking for comedy. Yeah. She just played the truth of it. A bit like our first ever Miss Trunchbull, Bernie Carvel. He came into audition for this despotic woman and, and <laughs> just played it utterly seriously. And we yeah. went, ah, that's how that's... we're going to get it. Yeah. Um, so so she, she was amazing. But actually she and I as people, uh, Tim and Millie, as opposed to Lucky and Meg, traveled a similar journey because what I was very aware that we had written a show where I was committed to spending 10 weeks in the middle of Australia, mostly in the cab of a pickup truck for, with a teenage girl, you know, yeah. and I thought this is going to be a nightmare. I mean, I love, you know, my daughter's a teenage girl. I just thought, you know, we're going to have to be looking after her all the time. She's going to get tired. She's going to need a chaperone. You know, we, we're going to have to stop shooting because, you, you know, young young actors aren't allowed to work as many hours and she's going to be annoying and, you know, yeah. self-centred and, you know, all these things that teenagers are, or I was when I was a teenager. Yeah, and sure. this kid, I mean, we're lucky because she was 18 when she started, um, even though she's playing much younger. But, my God, her she's just an independent little unit. She's, she had a tough time herself as, mm. you know, she hasn't had a perfectly smooth, happy, happy um, teenagehood, uh, you know, for various, you know, just family and stuff. Yeah. I, that's sort of not, none of my business. But what I mean is she's got some grit. She's got some scars of her own. I don't right, think right. Mind, she mind, mind came me. through it in the performance yeah. for sure. And maybe and use some of it too, you know, who knows? Yeah. So, oh, yeah. of course. I mean, yeah. all you can do as an actor is use what you've got. And yeah. So, so I just kind of left her alone because I also thought for her having to commit to 10 weeks with me mm. and me being a writer and sort of, you know, being right on the, on the, on the left-hand side of the director and being quite in control of the project, it must have been daunting for her. So we just kind of 
didn't push. We'd, I didn't say, let's go out to dinner and get to know each other. We just sort of turned up on the set and slowly, slowly, like our characters, basically fell in love. I mean, I just yeah. love her. And yeah. I think she loves me in a weird way. In a weird way, way, for sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, but we just, we just really, really care for each other. And it was really organic getting to uh, know work, each other. And, it works so well. And I also love how you kind of smatter some music in there. And like one of my favorite scenes is early on, so I'm not really giving away anything, but when um, you see these bikers, and you're yeah. scared to death, like, uh-oh, you know, and one of them's playing yeah. the piano, but Lucky just goes up there and plays with him, and of course, oh my God, what a great scene that was. Like, oh, good. I don't know why yeah, that really good. stuck with me, but I loved it, and I love the fact that you mix some of your musical talents in there, too. I think that's great. Yeah, well, we wanted him to be a musician, but we also, uh, one real obsession with this show for me was to make a good show that is about music, and about what music means to musicians. I very rarely see it done in a way that doesn't make me cringe. I, yes. I mean, I'm sure you understand that. If you ever see your own field of expertise depicted on TV, it makes you go, oh, not, you know, because music shows about musicians and music are often made by music fans. Yeah. Um, and often it's, it's too cheesy and music and the creative process are seen as this, sort of, you know, inspiration from the spheres, you know, and it's not mm -hmm. making music's like being a chef or being a plumber. It's sometimes it, it's just the last thing you want to do. And Lucky, my character, only really plays either when he's trying to save his skin or get laid or eventually when he knows that it's the thing that is needed for yeah. healing. Yeah. But, but only he doesn't play all the time. And, and, and being really sparing with how much I played, because in Australia and England especially, I am known as that guy with the piano. So we were really disciplined about how often we played that card sort of thing. Yeah, understood, for sure. But I, like I say, perfect balance, the whole thing. Like I just keep complimenting oh, the show you. because I loved it so much. Um, that's what we want, that's what we're here. That's what you want, that's why we're here. Why, uh, a couple more minutes, because I, I know you have this very exciting Q&A tonight with Judd Apatow, who's a big fan of yours. That must be pretty, pretty thrilling. Yeah, that was great. I mean, I sort of threw a Hail Mary. I know how busy he is and we're not close. We've just met a couple of times. Yeah. I think he, he discovered me through Matilda as well, through his kids. But um, I wrote to him and went, I've got this show. It's coming out in the States. It's on Sundance now. You know, it's not a channel that everyone knows. And, it's, you know, how am I going to get traction? I don't suppose you'd do a QA and a with me. And he just came back and went, yep. Uh, amazing. And I just went, oh, my God, I've got John Apatow ringing the producers. I've got John Apatow. You see, sometimes he's it works. He's such a good man. Yeah, Listen, yeah. He's it's a, like me very... emailing and asking for an interview with you. And it was like, yeah, I'll I do know. it. And I'm like, this I'm is know. awesome. I'm so excited. My 28-year-old okay. is the biggest fan of yours, honestly. He was so oh, excited. Awesome. Yeah, huge, huge fan. Oh, wicked. We'll send my love. I will. Someone like it very quickly. Um, you're so used to being out on the stage and touring and everything. What yeah. has this pandemic done to you? <laughs> Well, I, I am, every now and then it drives me a bit nuts. Um, but that said, until I started touring again a year and a half ago, I hadn't really toured for seven or eight years. I, I sort of made a conscious decision to try and be, uh, uh, create more work behind the camera, so to speak. You know, after mm -hmm. Matilda, I thought, wow, I don't need to be on stage all the time. I want to make work that other people can carry. Yeah. And, um, and I've done all sorts of stuff. I've made an album this year that I'm still um, that I'm yeah. Still I wanted to ask you about that. On. Your yeah, first studio uh, album. It's a that's studio a album, and it's not comedy, and you know, it's still quirky and stuff. But that's been a real journey for me because I had started as a just a singer songwriter, yeah. and it's taken 20 years since I first did a kind of demo and tried to get a record deal. So you'll hear lots more about that. Maybe we can talk again when I'm plugging that. Um, I would, I'm holding you for that. I would love to great. talk No, about definitely, because yeah. I, I mean, I really want people to hear that record. It's, yeah. It doesn't sound like what you're listening to on the radio necessarily, but I, I you know, it's been good. That's and okay. uh, so I've been doing that and promoting this. And, but the fact is, most of my life, or at least half my career, is writing in my little room here, uh, in my spare room in my house. And so... I think my problems with the pandemic have been just like everyone's. Yeah. How do you keep the kids kids from going mental? And um, <laughs> how do we how do we 
keep our mental health right and exercise yes. enough. And uh, it hasn't been as bad here as it has been in the States. And I'm That's not true. actually sure how you guys are going. We're, we're actually not good. We're doing really well here. Um, our numbers are really down and they're starting to open right. things slowly but surely. But you know what? I, yeah. I'm still worried about traveling and, and all that. Yeah. Uh, you know, borders are closed. Well, and, I, yeah. um, I, I have another son that studies in Dublin and, and he's veterinary. And I don't know if he'll be able to go no. back, you know. So no. hopefully. But yeah, no, the States is... Thank goodness yeah. here in Canada, we're, we're yeah. doing really it well. It's a very messy country on yeah. many levels. Well, yeah, that's a whole other interview, my friend. That that's is a whole, a whole other series of interviews. Yeah, yes, yeah. it is. It is. But listen, yeah. I want to thank you so much for your time today, Tim. It's Absolute just a pleasure, pleasure for me to talk to you. Uh, best of luck with this series. I know it's. I, I know it's going to be a hit here, and um, and I will take you up on that uh, interview again when your album is ready to come out. I would love love to speak Beautiful. with you again. Just thank a huge you. fan. I love. I haven't really talk to a lot of Canadians or North Americans in general about Upright. Now, great sort of, the great experiment of this is do people get the tone, get that balance between humour? And I, I always know that Canadians are going to get it. And I'm, I'm still waiting to see whether Americans sort of, it appeals to them because it's really weird how yeah. it is a genuinely different culture. So it really, really I, I'm not optimistic though. Oh, no, I think, you know, listen, I used to work in a video store when I was younger in high school. That was my whole, you know, how kind of got me yeah. into this business. And I have to tell you, my favorite films, the ones that I would always recommend were always Australian. I don't know, always like the film festivals. Yeah. I, would, I would go after the Australian directors. To me, like, what's in the water there? How come you guys are so great at I all this know. stuff? I do think there's some strange cultural Venn diagram crossover between Canadians and Australians. It's something to do with maybe the Australians feel like the little brother of the United Kingdom in the same way that Canadians feel like there's this monster below them. Yeah. Um, there's something dry and a bit self-aware. Um, there's always been a connection. And when I'm doing live shows, I, once you land in Toronto or Montreal or mm -hmm. Vancouver, you're just like, oh, this is going to be great. I feel They're going to get every joke. Yeah. 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 Well, we love you, Tim. Thank you so much for everything. And like I say, pleasure. best of luck with Upright. It's such a fantastic show. Have a great time again. tonight, too. Thank Have a good you night. so much. Okay. Bye bye. bye.